Hi there, welcome, welcome to Home Keepers. Come right on in, my friend. Grab yourself a cup of tea, won't you? And stay with us for the next few minutes. Uh, we're so glad you're there, and it is such a privilege for us to be here uh, with this wonderful, wonderful ministry. It's going to be a good one today. I don't know, you know, what's more frightening than to get a call in the middle of the night, you know, and find out that your child's been in a serious accident, but that's what happened to my guest today. And uh, you will meet uh, Daniel and Luke Bernard. Uh, Luke is Daniel's son and was in a very, very serious accident that should have taken his life. But thank God it didn't, and it has turned into a ministry for the family. And uh, that's not unusual, you know, in that strange economy of God when he says, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. And so you're going to meet that kind of a family today. And we're going to make uh, bruschetta chicken. I don't know who put together all that stuff for bruschetta, but I absolutely love it and have only really seen it on really good bread, you know, like a French bread or Italian. Uh, but it's going to be on chicken today. Yeah, the recipe's called chicken bruschetta. So we'll all find out about it all at the same time. It's smelling awfully good right now. Uh, but before I join Stephanie, let me again uh, remind you that we're viewer supported. Uh, I just now came from my office upstairs and I signed a whole pile of letters uh, to you wonderful viewers who have contributed to this program this month. And uh, I write notes on them and, and when you send in a prayer request, I take that prayer request home with me and I pray for it. And you know, most of them are for the family. Most of them are pray for my children, pray for my grandchildren. And I'm so happy to do that. And I just wanna thank you from the bottom of my heart for the donations you make to keep this program on the air. And if you would like to uh, donate this month, uh, you can do it by calling 1-800-229-0059 if that's your method of paying and banking and all that. And uh, if you don't do it that way, and I don't do it that way unless I just have to, uh, write to me at Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. And thank you. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. And I know this marvelous crew right now in this uh, room, thank you as well. God bless you. You, put, you. you do a lot of banking online, don't you? I do everything online, do you? yes. Why does it scare me? It's because I'm it an old lady. It probably should scare me more, but... <laughs> it's we'll all go crash together. Yes, right? we're all just going to crash yeah. together. <laughs> I, I think I mentioned before my grandsons, uh, boy, they're such good workers. I'm so proud of them. Uh, they often hold down two jobs and try mm -hmm. to get through college. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I'm not sure they ever have any money. I, I cash. Gave, no one has cash anymore. I gave Caleb uh, $20 once. I said, now listen, I, I want you to spend this, but you should have it. You yeah. should just yeah. carry Keep, it. Carry cash on you, yes. Carry it. So, yes. That's a new experience for them. Yeah. You like bruschetta? Yes. And this is one of the, this is going to be one of those super simple recipes mm -hmm. that's going to be super tasty. I just yes, it will. know it. Yes, it will. Okay. So you have tomatoes, garlic, fresh basil that's cut up, and you have um, extra virgin olive oil. You're going to mix those up, and you're going to spray the pan over the sink. Over the please. sink. And she then, always looks out for my safety, and yes. I just appreciate it. Yes. So I have just plain flour here. Because Wanda was out for ten weeks. Ten weeks because, because she oil her refrigerator with four oh uh, with um I think it's four oh one. No 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 the uh, WD forty. Yeah. And she didn't spray a rag. She sprayed the refrigerator. She slipped and she hurt her knee so bad. Ten weeks. So ten we try weeks. not we try to avoid any I casualties. It. Okay, so that's flour. This tomato, fresh garlic. You have tomato, fresh garlic, fresh basil, and just you're gonna just do a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. Just uh, no set amount, just well, I think it, it, it says two. Good. It says two teaspoons, but just two. Or, no, it says one tablespoon. One table. Okay, well, but we, just you can eye it, because you're a good. You're a good. Well, that's it. what all the folks do on the Food Network. Yes. They never get out a measuring spoon. No, not when it comes to cooking, but when it comes to baking, they do. I think I've asked you before if you've watched that program, Chaw. Oh yes, I love watching it because I, especially the one with the kids. I'm like, how how could these kids possibly know what to do with these ingredients? I know it, and they'll make a sauce or yeah, something. Yeah, no, I'm out. Okay, yeah. so I have breadcrumbs, I have grated Parmesan cheese, and I have um, two tablespoons of melted butter. I'm going to mix those up. 
real quick. Yeah, I think I'd mix this together first and just let it Oh, that's double. what we did earlier. Plus, you just don't put it. it on until it's just about ready to come out. Mm -hmm. You put it on after I, it's really cooked, and, mm -hmm. and then you put it back in the Just the enough to pans. heat that, just enough to heat that up. Okay, so that's the topping. I have the pan. And these were huge chicken breasts, and she yes. sliced them in half. I sliced them right in Perfect. half. Perfect. Yes. Yeah. So then you just want to do the flour. And then the egg, which is backwards to me in my southern cooking. You know, usually yeah. like with fried chicken, you do the egg and then you do the, mm -hmm. but we're doing it, we're doing it this way, flour, egg. You're going to do however many pieces you have. Mm -hmm. And then you're just going to put that yummy topping on it. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to bake it for, these are thin breasts, so 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to, and, and that's covered with aluminum foil. And then you're going to take the aluminum foil off and you're going to bake it for another 10 minutes. And then you're going to put the bruschetta um, ingredients on and bake it for another five. And this is what it looks then like. Then you're going to have that tasty, tasty yumminess. Mm-hmm. And I am going to taste it. And be careful because it might be yeah. just a little hot. And it is, that's good television, but we want you to be careful. This is what it, let's see, I want to cut so I get a mouthful of the... Yes, make sure you get the yummy goodness on top. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, why bother? Mm-hmm. I hope it's not too hot. Careful. Mm. Is that so good? Okay, so I have the three, mm -hmm. and I'm putting the topping on and then baking it. Mm-hmm. Okay? Is it so good? Mm -hmm. It smells so ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Talk, my mouth is full. Oh, it, it well. <laughs> so then Tell you them your life story. Oh, no, 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 no. So then you cover it with aluminum foil. Don't mm -hmm. forget the aluminum foil, because if you don't, it's going to get way too brown, this topping. I'd like to meet whoever put this combination together, yes. because, and this is uh, thought-provoking, because you could probably use this on a lot of oh, things. Oh, so many things. I bet you could mix it, like, with green beans and fresh green beans and stuff like that. And just just chips. You just need chips, mm -hmm. like nacho yeah. chips. Yeah, right. <laughs> Oh, there's no end to what you can do with this. Well, if you want this recipe, it is called chicken bruschetta, and we'll send it to you. A lot of people send, uh, un, you know, write to us through the snail mail. Others email, but we'll get it right out to you, no it's cost. Great. We're so glad for uh, you to have it. And now uh, you're going to see a horrible accident or the results of it and meet Luke and Daniel Bernard very interesting story, so stay with us. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, just write to the address on your screen, or you can email your request to artheline at rippy.org. March 9th of 2013, I was in a near fatal car accident in Los Angeles. They rushed me to the hospital where I had an emergency surgery to save my life. They took a 4x5 inch piece of my skull to remove two blood clots and allow the damaged brain to swell. I also had two broken vertebrae in my neck and back and suffered brain trauma. I was alone in the hospital for nearly three days fighting for my life. I was in a Houston airport when I got the call. Hey, it's bad. You need to get there right away. And we, we just prayed, Satan, you can't have my son. Jesus, don't let Satan take our son. We believe there's no way that our son was destined to die at 25. Doctors gave us uh, very little hope. We began to mobilize everybody to, to pray for total recovery. We were told that Luke had a break in his neck and in his back, and um, we were concerned about that. But we saw him moving his legs and his arms so much, we asked them to take more x-rays. And when we did, um, they kept coming back saying, he's stable, he's stable. Well, to, the, to us, we said, he's healed. We were told by um, the doctors that it would take a year for Luke to have a surgery to replace his skull. So we had taken him to a neurosurgeon to 
uh, evaluate him and have a checkup. And when we were there, he looked at him and he said, he's ready. This is what uh, was supposed to take a year happened in two months after he'd come home um, to rehab and after he'd come from the hospital. And little by little, step by step, Luke passed every critical stage necessary to live. Hey guys, I'm Luke. And here's Luke. Boy, it's good to see you. <laughs> it's good to see Congratulations you. Congratulations on your recovery. I'm going to ask you just a little bit. Um, after that accident, it seemed like your recovery was quite speedy. But did you have to learn to do anything all over again? Uh, through my traumatic brain injury, depending on how intense your traumatic brain injury is, you have to go through rehab to relearn things in life. And mine was pretty intensive. I had to relearn everything. Again, it was basically growing up again. How to I'd talk? Talk, write, dress myself. Read? Everything, yes. Wow. Yeah, there were, uh, it's from just understand, it's growing up from a baby again. That, you know, that's uh, quite a way to put it, and it's extremely thought-provoking. You just try to put yourself... So, thank God, your yes. recovery was a lot faster than they expected, and um, you're doing great, and you're the daddy, Daniel. I, I am. Yes. Boy, what was that like? Well, it, w the, the news of it, as I was in the Houston airport, of course, and knowing that he had already been there for and three days. he was in days. California. He was in California. We got the news three days later through his employer. So, and then, of course, it was the, the worst news you can have and the worst yeah. plane flight I could have had. And, um, but, uh, but God is good. And he has his purposes, and maybe this is one of them. Uh, this is a book by um, Luke. Yes. And it deals with a couple of things, the accident, but also... Out of that, uh, a message about favoritism in a family, um, and I'm sure it's in every family. In every family in the world, there's probably some kid who thinks that there was a sibling that was the favorite. Mm -hmm. And from that, and this is what I really want to uh, hope that you'll get a handle on, this is a workbook. That's right, yeah. And I've been in the ministry forever and have never seen anything on a subject that I've never heard discussed anymore, for one thing. Not in the church, anyway. <laughs> right. And also, uh, so thorough. I just congratulate you. Oh, thank you. On this. Okay, now why? You have six children. <laughs> they're probably all mad at you at one time or another. And, right. And uh, feel that they're the least loved. Well, why the favorite? Why? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, uh, as as uh, remarkable as the recovery was and then you know it was four months after this accident where Luke had four months prior to this had was just learning to write his name again that he, he gets a dream and and we encourage him to write down the dream and and so from that came this script that we have now novelized into a book called the favorite but after Luke wrote it you know he said you know, like, what are we going to call it? You know? <laughs> and, I, and, and, you know, knowing it was about two brothers and mm -hmm. uh, the favoritism that uh, they collide over, uh, you know, regarding their, their father especially, uh, was just from our experience, just having six kids, it was always something where one of the kids, it was like, who's the favorite this week, or this month, and so forth. And depending on what was going on with the kids, and we might have an emphasis because oh, someone's going to be launching. Mm -hmm. I had my daughters were singers, and so we're ron launching their they're getting their, the attention. their CD. They're getting the attention, and then and then it was not not only the intent, who's the favorite of dad, but then or the parents, but rather, uh, well, one's the favorite. That's dad's favorite, or that's mom's favorite, and so forth. So it was always it was an ongoing thing, you know. I have a confession. My son is a pastor in uh, Montgomery, Alabama, for over 20 years. Every email, every card, everything he signs at your favorite. <laughs> your favorite son. But you're the only no, one. it's just your favorite. Because <laughs> oh, uh, right. there's a daughter. Uh, and, okay, uh, okay. Yeah, and so. the, the foundation of the favorite and how it came to pass is through the, through the accident. Uh -huh. And I, 
I was kind of a shrug of the shoulders. Yeah, my, my parents loved me, but I fully didn't grasp how much they loved me. And my understanding as far as God, I thought I had to be this perfect Christian mm -hmm. for God to love me. Uh, and I wasn't living that way. I, they, they called me the party animal and when I was living in L.A., uh -huh. just to give an understanding of how I was living. Mm -hmm. Then an accident happens. God saves my life, heals, him, heals me miraculously. So that through, then I came to the understanding that I don't have to be anything this perfect Christian for God to love me. He loves me right now, how I am right now. And we're now. all his favorites. Yeah, right. and, and my parents, they flew from Florida to LA, woke up at 4 a.m., stayed in the hospital with me until 11 p.m. Mm -hmm. every day. Then I'm like, my parents, I really just didn't fathom how much my parents loved me. And so that's the the. It sounds the like you foundation. were beginning to at least feel <laughs> like a favorite. <laughs> uh, now this is as old as as certainly um, Isaac and Rebecca. <laughs> I don't know, maybe um, maybe Adam and Eve had favorites. Uh, probably did, but um, it is it is biblical. And on this program, we've discussed how uh, Rebecca loved Jacob and um, Isaac. Esau and all that. Then in the New Testament, you have the prodigal, uh, where kind of like, why wouldn't the older brother think he was the favorite? So this is not new. What I appreciate about this is that you go into such depth, solid depth. There's some personality tests in here, which I think are beneficial and helpful. So um, do you believe that most parents are clueless as to uh, having a favorite or that their children or, or a child believes that there are favorites? Well, I, I, I believe that, um, that probably was first starting out that they're not probably as sensitive as they might want to be uh -huh. and, and as to especially the perception of favoritism because it's not really you know am I am I showing favoritism but based on someone's personality um, their love languages and all those sorts of things can be where that how but how is that child perceiving uh -huh. it and um, and so it's very, very important that's why the that's why the the uh, personality profiles are so important because um, the, as you speak to one child and then another, then just some, their perception is one child because of the personalities get along easier. Exactly. That communication's easier. And so just because of that alone, another child can say, oh, well, you know, their favorite. I even, you know, my, my brother and I was, we actually went through the study together and he swore that I'm the favorite. And I said, no, you are. But, but from his it's side, hopeless. <laughs> it's cool, like, because he and my dad just, you know, they had so many things in common and so yeah, forth. There's another but, one. Yeah. There are just a lot of things in common that they l did together. And I just said, well, you know, uh, and, and my brother was more good with his hands and my dad, you know, and I wasn't, I was, you know, I couldn't even tell you what a wrench was <laughs> and, you know, that whole thing, but what, I give but, up. but, but I was, but I was good in sports. And so my dad, you know, looked for, looked to me in sports and he thought, well, and I was the older. And so that, so they both had those kind of perceptions. It was very, very interesting how, you know, walk away. So it's, it's, it's very, uh, very, very important. I think this would be a great shower gift for any woman who's pregnant, to be honest with you. I mean, don't wait to look in hindsight, but look ahead. Now, uh, we're going to run out of time on this. Um, there's some children that are a lot harder to love. You know, that's uh, very true. But you bring out birth order. I think that's important. Birth order, blended family, and, and the single parent. All of that could weigh heavily on this subject. Oh, yes. And, and you know... Uh, all those things you have to consider, uh, w especially when you're raising that child. Um, we have a couple examples in, in there about even uh, uh, where the, 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 the mom's raising the kids, but one of the children looks like the, the, the dad who's gone now. And so there's the, so th th that one child never got hugged growing up. And, and since that, that detach of that love from the mom because of that um, ended up, this guy ends up becoming a pastor 
and mm -hmm. uh, and won in his city the Father of the Year award uh, after all that. There you, you go. Know, and, and make it and makes amends with his because of Jesus. You know, he learns that he is the favorite in God's eyes, and he makes amends with his mom and so forth. So it's a tremendous story, even within the, the study guide. And uh, this goes into such beautiful detail. A lot of good scripture backs up everything in here. Um, now, I heard my mom say uh, more than once, should we treat all of them the same? And that's, that sounds good, and, and uh, no fault on her. There was never better mother in the world. But the Bible says, train up a child in the way that he should go. I remember, I think Chuck Swindoll was saying, according to his bend, mm -hmm. like, a, like a branch. And this is another thing that parents can figure out. Okay, this one's different, so we, we've got to deal differently. Um, and that can also give a perceived favoritism. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, I, we have a, in the, in the movie script and in so forth, but it was actually happened to me uh -huh. just when I was growing up. Um, my parents gave me one Christmas a big guitar, which I had no intention of playing the guitar, but they, they thought it was great and they gave me this guitar. And, but the other, my other siblings, uh, the guitar costs a lot more money. I mean, the other siblings got a number of other small gifts, you know what I mean? But to me, as a, I think I was nine years old at the time, I'm looking at all the gifts, that, the, the, the many gifts that they got, and I got this one guitar. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Can't win. The parents <laughs> cannot win. <laughs> I'm going like, who cares? You know, because I, I hadn't even played a guitar at that no. time. Didn't even show any interest in that. So, but they thought it was just a great gift, you know. And I was, and they saw how disappointed I were, and they got very upset with me mm -hmm. here on Christmas Day because of I showed my disappointment. And but something like that. Oh man, we, you know, we can go on for hours. And oh, hours absolutely. With this. I do want you know the website is on the screen. And I, ho I hope you'll write it down. You'll find out about the, um, the movie that uh, hopefully will come out of the book, which was a dream, right? Yes, it a, was. A dream. Uh, a dream that filtered through a very injured brain at the time, correct? Yep, and I was suffering from insomnia at the time as well, and I'm still taking um, medication in order to sleep. Um, but at that given time, I didn't take medication, and I slept throughout the entire night and I had this very vivid dream and that's what I believed God was wanting me to write this down. Yeah and I think God's very much in in this to uh, just sound the alarm but you know there there's another component <laughs> to my way of thinking <laughs> that you have these whiny kids who say everybody was the favorite except me isn't there a time just get over it okay. you know get over yourself and what is, is what happened, happened. God's on his throne. He hasn't gone anywhere. He loves you, and no well, doubt and that, your parents and, do. And really, and that's the premise of the, uh, uh, of the book, the movie, and so forth, is that regardless of your dynamics, whatever took place, you know, ultimately what's important is what does God say about you? And God says, hey, he died for you, therefore yeah. you're his favorite. Yeah, for sure. Uh, because there'll always be human frailty. Absolutely. There's no perfect parent anywhere. And uh, the, uh, the Bible gives us a good roadmap to that, but... Um, yeah, in the workbook, there, and there's that place for it. If you even mm -hmm. felt, for whatever, there's forgiveness and that yeah. healing that can take place. But there's that so personality forth. test in the back that uh, I think would be beneficial. So we barely scratched the surface, but you live close by. So <laughs> uh, maybe we can have you come back again. Uh, you stay with me. I have a couple things to say before we have to say goodbye. Arthelene would like you to keep the following information handy. You may contact Homekeepers by writing to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or go to www.rippy.org. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers, and we thank you for your support. At the top of the program, I mentioned that we are viewer supported, and I again want to thank you uh, for those of you who do send in and, and those of you who will. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, if you use your credit card or debit card, it's 1-800-229-0059, and the address is on your screen. That's box 6922 Clearwater, 
Florida 33758. And thank you. Thank you in advance. Uh, we were considering the things that the Daniels were saying or the Bernards were saying. I was thinking of a scripture, uh, Psalm 119, where the writer says, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heavens. Thy faithfulness continues throughout all generations. And in producing a program like Homekeepers, I think about that a lot and also at my stage of life, uh, thinking back on things that my grandparents said when I was real little didn't mean a thing at the time. They mean everything now. He's faithful for all generations. And I was indeed fortunate to have two grandfathers and grandmothers uh, who were strong believers in the Lord and parents and to um, be able to raise my children in the fear of the Lord. He is faithful to all generations. And now I can look back with five generations. I have eight great grandchildren and they're all learning the ways of the Lord. And I have one grandson who at about the age of six or seven, he came up to his mother, my only granddaughter, Ashley, and said, Mom, I'm a man of God. And I thought, oh, I got chills. I mean, that child declared it. And they know their mommy and their daddy and their grandparents, and they know who Jesus is. So he is faithful to all generations, but how about generations being faithful to him? Unless you tell them about Jesus, unless you tell them the ways of the Lord, they're not going to know. They, they don't just learn it just walking around. They have to be taught and it needs to be lived in the home and it pays such huge benefits. Next to the uh, wasted time and wasted efforts I see in so many families, um, even, even in the church, but just in your own little sphere of influence, you see what a waste of time and the children are never being taught the things of the Lord. And I'll tell you, it's a rough payday. It's a very rough payday when that happens. So much of my mail is pray for my grandchildren, pray for my children. Uh, they really got off the road. And as I mentioned, you know, talking to the Bernards, there's no perfect parent. But it's so important that we make the priorities so that the children know what's important. Think about that. And please remember, there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers. 